Hello everybody, my name is Queen Alajoye Ifafumike Shango Femi. And I just want to welcome you uh, here and now into the uh, Ile of my ancestors. Because today we want to touch and start to talk about uh, the first of a series on ancestral veneration and ancestral uh, healing. And today we want to just talk a little bit about what and who are those ancestors. Sometimes when um, early in our life, or at some point in our life, we may get sent to live with um, relatives or we may even be adopted and be grown so close to these people and when it's time to talk about ancestors and say, oh, well, these are the people that raised me, so they're part of my ancestry. And no, they're not. When we talk about ancestors, we're talking about those that are of bloodline. That's what ancestors are, those that are of bloodline. So, and being, understanding that it's because of those ancestors that we're here today, and we stand on their shoulders. So we just want to touch a little bit, like I said, this is the first series of many, and we'll go until Spirit says stop. So uh, we want to just talk a little bit today about the ancestors. Sometimes there are, we find ourselves um, going through ups and downs and trying to make decisions on our own and sometimes there's a little voice comes to us and says, well, maybe you should do this or just give you an idea of, of what you can do to come out of a situation that you're in. And because he says, oh, I don't know, I didn't hear that, so we bypass that. But let me just tell you here, that is one of the ways that the ancestors come to us. But we don't want to jump the gun. We want to start from the very beginning. Why do we even need ancestors? Why do we even venerate ancestors? As you know, when you can look into the world today with all the shifts that are going on in the world and it's uh, morphing, and we are personally morphing in our own lives and going through exchanges and, and different circumstances, if we knew anything about our ancestors, these are things that our ancestors had gone through. The ones that crossed over here in America, the ones that crossed over in the motherland of Africa, the ones that crossed over in many other lands that we have yet to discover. They've been through the, these things, so they're, they're still close to us. We enjoyed them when we were able to see and feel and talk to them and touch them in the physical life, and now that they've gone to the other side, we can still be in touch with those ancestors because they are the ones that are still right there. may not be in the physical, but they're still there. And when we start to venerate the ancestors, what we're doing is we're elevating them. We're sending them, the spirit of them, from this spirit, to enjoin with the heavenly spirits that lives in the heavens with Olodumare, as some people may call God. And once they have made that full journey, then they are ready to take their seat in the ancestral realm. And we may be able to call on them to help us in these days. I also want to point out that I know we are quick to find out that we come from Africa and different parts of Africa. And we just want to jump right into those ancestors. But we have to first learn about those ancestors that crossed over here in the Americas. Simply because we can't jump over them and jump to other land because if we jump over them we may not get to even connect with those of other lands. We got to first give the obeisance to those that crossed over in the land that we were born. So who are these ancestors? These ancestors are our mothers, our fathers, our siblings, our uncles, our aunts, our cousins, our grandparents, those ancestors, bloodline ancestors. And I often say sometimes to people that you need to know those ancestors because they are an intermediary in connecting with God, with Olodumare. Sometimes our message is not clear. Sometimes we don't know how to put our words in the right phrase in our prayers. And we can go to our ancestors since they're already up there with Olodumare 
then they can clearly speak the language and get our message through clearly. And that's one of the reasons why we need our ancestors. Also, we seem to be having problems in, in our marriages, problems with our children. Uh, and our ancestors, they've been through all of this kind of stuff. They went through slavery, and, and, and they, they was a human sacrifice for us. Doesn't mean that they died and just went somewhere and, and forgot about us. And it's our feeling that what they did when they, they crossed over, and some dying in the Middle Passage, some actually dying in the motherland of Africa, those that, that died in the, in the land of America, uh, they laid down and covered themselves up and got together and enforced those secrets and those ways of life that they wanted us that are here walking around in live and living color today to follow in their footsteps. And maybe we wouldn't have such a bad time in the government with the politics if we go back and remember or even learn some of the old ways. So that's another reason why we venerate our ancestors. You say, oh, you're talking about venerating better. What does that mean? It, what it means is that we're going to take care of the ancestors. You, as you can see, this shrine here is my ancestral shrine. You can see that we give them water, we give them light. And let's talk a little bit about giving light. It's just as if for as well as you may know your own home. And if all the lights are out and you're just coming in and you start to walk around, the first thing happens is that you bump into things. You start knocking over things. You start breaking things possibly. That's happening. But if before you walked into that house you flicked that light on, then you could see your way. Same thing for ancestral spirits. A lot of them have not had their proper uh, elevation. They haven't had their proper ceremonies. And some of them get stuck between this world and the next world. So it is our job to venerate and uplift them and give them light so that we move them where they need to go to enjoy with the other ancestors get cleaned up and everything that they need to do to prepare themselves. And if they did everything right, they're going to stay up in the realm with the ancestors. And when we get ready and need them, whether we get ready or not, we always need them. But in the event that we want to do something special, we have things that we do in order to call the spirits of the ancestors. They are the wind beneath our wings. They are the ones that still look after us as if we were newborn babies. They are the ones that still chastise us as if they were still living bodies here on this side of the world. So yes, our ancestors are so very important. And ancestors is something that everybody has. Doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what culture, everybody has ancestors. And guess what? We as African Americans, and this is just a little joke that I have sometimes with myself, that we're the most unique people that ever walked the face of this earth because we're mixed with any, every, and all races. And we're still here. And I think that we're on a, a good mission this time, this time around. I think this is what the ancestors want us to do, is to... Uh, start to remember to call on them when sometimes there just is no money and we just lost our job and they're knocking on our door ready to seal up our door because we haven't paid our rent or our mortgage. Or sometimes we don't even have food to feed our babies or even to feed ourselves. Those are the things that we call upon the ancestors for. A lot of them may not have lived in fine houses like we live today. They may not have had access to TV and computers and radio and those kinds of things, but they had a method of communication. And that's basically what we are really talking about here today, is communicating with the spirit of our ancestors.